Hi, I'm Steve Cameron, and this is a February 2014 development update for Space Nerds in Space. Uh, the first thing I have to show you is, uh, well, two things. First of all, this cool model of the Wombat, uh, which is the sh ship that the player drives in Space Nerds in Space, but also instances of the Wombat occur as non-player character ships. And the modeling was done by uh, another member of the TXRX hackerspace here in Houston by the name of uh, Zach Schultz. And he did a really great job um, texturing and modifying this model. Um, so things are looking pretty cool. And then this this model viewer program that I'm work, that I'm showing you right here. This is something that uh, Jeremy Van Grinsven put together, um, so that we could see what the models look like in the game without actually running them in the game and get a, you know a much nicer view. And we can change the lighting. Um, so that's that's kind of cool. Um, but let's go on to the game. There's some other new things in the game that I want to show you. One thing you might notice is the little flashes that you might you're seeing on the screen. So until now, non-player character ships or computer controlled AI controlled ships have not used a warp drive. They've just kind of driven around and, you know, not using a warp drive. So these flashes that you're seeing on the screen are non-player character ships using their warp drives to travel long distances. So the effect is when they warp there's a nice bright flash wherever they depart from and another night nice bright flash wherever they arrive and additionally from the departure point you see these kind of sparks emanating in the direction that they're warping. So from these flashes, you can kind of see that, hey, there's a ship that just left this point and it was going that away. Or there's a ship that just arrived. You, you can kind of see what's going on with the warp drive from the, from the effect. Um, let's turn on some stuff here. So this is the, if you're not familiar with Space Nerds in Space, let me describe it a little bit. It is a multiplayer network uh, starship bridge simulator. So you have a number of screens, like for example, this is the navigation screen from which you drive the ship. This is the weapon screen where you shoot the guns. This is the engineering screen where you, for example, turn on things. Now I'm distributing power to different systems in the ships. Now navigation, you remember, was blank. Now it's not because I've given things power. So you can kind of see um, things that are around you. Oh, one new net, one new thing uh, with navigation that is uh, new. You notice, you notice the the planet kind of fades out at the edges. So as you, that's something new that Jeremy came up with uh, to fade things out at the edges, which is kind of cool. And it, if you if you ever get damaged and your your sensor power is fluctuating you'll see this kind of, it gives a really nice effect. Um, let's see, what else? So, on, on this screen, one thing I'd like to point out is on the planet models, um, we've got now shadows. You see the shadow of both the planet on the ring and the ring the, pl the shadow of the ring on the planet. That's what this kind of dark band here is. And if you notice, it actually conforms very closely to the actual ring. And that's because in the shader for the planet, it's casting a ray back to the light source and finding where it intersects the ring and then using the alpha value for the ring to figure out how much to darken the surface of the planet by. So this ring, this is actually in real time calculating the shadow of this ring and if the light source moves the shadow will move with it so it's actually really cool or at least I think it is
and then uh, so you can see a similar shadow right here because this planet also has a ring and you see the ships moving around now I've, one one thing I've done is um, for each of the planets I have a kind of security level so you can either be a high security planet or a low security planet or a medium level security planet and and if you're high security planet what that means is you've got these um, sort of cops driving around policing the area and this this ship the ship right here that I'm trying to zoom in on is one of the cop ships and so if you're in a high security area and you start trying to fight you notice that down here in the weapons it says high security area in your radar that's to kind of warn you that hey if you start blowing people out of the water the cops are going to come after you and they will come after you and blow you out of the sky most likely you can warp out of there I suppose um, but anyway I have this notion of high security area so that when I drop you into the game <laughs> you don't immediately start being attacked. You're very nicely dropped into a high security area. Not all planets are high security, so if you go to a low security planet, there will be uh, plenty of action, so to speak. Um, this is the repair screen. So you've got this little robot that you can drive around and repair different systems of the ship. Um, let's see what else. Oh, these nebula that you see here, those are actually three-dimensional objects that you can drive to and fly through. Um, the science screen, I've got some new stuff on the science screen. So, the science screen's a little interesting. The distance in this two-dimensional display here is proportional to the three-dimensional distance. And when you click on something, you get kind of a three-dimensional indication. Like, you can see all these things are kind of below me. Um, so you can kind of explore uh, where things are relative to yourself with the screen in three dimensions but as a kind of if you don't have anything selected you just get a 2D view where the distance from you is actually proportional to the real distance um, if you click the details then you see whatever it is that you've selected um, now on there's a third one this 3D B B for ball um, and I've kind of repurposed this one a little bit to a long-range scanner just recently. I don't know how um, I don't know how this is going to work out. But now you can see much further with this screen than you can with the other one. Um, and you notice this kind of uh, there's like an orange slice shaped thing that you can swing around. That's your science scanner beam. Um, and then you can rotate the entire ball around to sort of see better um, and so you can see for very close things you see all the same stuff you see on the other screen but for things that are much farther away you kind of only see planets and star bases so you, at least you can figure out where all these really distant uh, planets and star bases are so that's sort of what's new on the science screen um, on the communication screen, this isn't very exciting visually, but there's a, there's a few new things. I can hail star bases, um, and then I get this kind of star base menu where I can uh, find out about local planets. Um, I can find out about... Um, I can arrange support contracts. I can buy and sell cargo. Um, I can, um, some, not all of these things are implemented yet in this little menu. Um, I can request permission to dock. Let's see, what else can I do? Oh, um, I have some meta commands, begin with a slash, I can say inventory, and this will show me, you know, what's in my cargo bay. At the moment, I have two cargo bay slots, and both of which are empty, and I have 2,500, uh, whatever the monetary unit of this game is, I don't know what to call it. it starts with a Z, other than I haven't figured it out. Um, let's see, there's a slash help command that gives you um, some ideas of what you got. You, 
of the commands that you can issue from the communication screen. There's channels. You can switch to arbitrary channels. Um, channel zero is sort of the broadcast channel. Um, so that's the communication screen. What else? Let's see. Um, on this screen, well, there's some kind of debug stuff. If I type AI debug here, I can get an idea of what the non-player character ships are thinking. Um, the first little line is sort of the stack, the AI stack. P is for patrol, A is for attack. Um, the TL is the threat level, so each each ship calculates kind of a threat level. Positive number means there's some sort of threat they're under. Um, negative number means they're very safe. Um, a large positive number and you'll start seeing them flee, so that's a different behavior uh, that, that hasn't been seen before, is the ships sometimes when they become uh, in a lot of danger you'll see that they're fleeing. Let's see if I can find one. Um, seems like there should be one in here somewhere. Yeah, this guy right here. That F means he's fleeing. So he is, his threat level is 72, which is quite high. This guy's 126, he's also fleeing. Um, so that there's a flee mode where they, they run away. Um, so that's that. You can turn it off by typing AI debug again. And then all that stuff goes away. Um, is there anything else new? So let's see. And then, of course, the AI also now has this new cop mode for uh, the high security areas where there's a cop. If you start shooting something, let's see, there's a cop right there. I won't shoot him, but let's see if I um, shoot this guy, maybe. And probably on my communications, now you see uh, I got the police... Police are are telling me that I'm in violation of spacefaring ordin ordinance 773ZA, and your ship full of corpses will be smoked. Uh, the police are not very happy with me at this point, and you can see that uh, my ship is quite damaged. And yeah, what the that's interesting. Anyway, um, that is that is kind of what's new for Space Nerds in Space in uh, in February of 2014. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video.